Welcome to Public Forum, a community outreach program produced at North Idaho College on the shores of Lake Coeur d'Alene. Featuring guests from around the globe, addressing a wide variety of subjects, Public Forum serves to educate and enlighten. Please join host and moderator, political scientist Tony Stewart, in welcoming today's guest. I welcome you to a two-part series this week and next week on a very wonderful subject. In fact, I would somewhat advertise as a celebration of a great, great breakthrough for the Coeur d'Alene tribe. Uh, some time ago, they bought a, a subsidiary of what is called uh, Bird Companies, and they have, uh, through that process, had a wonderful contract with the U.S. government and, and some grants, and so we're here to celebrate what this is going to do economically throughout the inland Northwest, and in order to carry out Today's program, and next week we welcome two guests. First of all, I welcome to the program Andy Barrett, who is the president of Bird Companies. Uh, welcome to the program, and I know you have a lot to tell us about this great uh, contract that's recently been awarded. Yes. And I'm equally pleased to have my friend that I've known for a long time, uh, Chairman Chief Allen. He is the chairman of the Coeur d'Alene Tribal Council, and, and uh, Chairman Allen, congratulations on what has just happened, and we look forward to talking about it today and again next week. Well, thank you, Tony. Thank you for having me again. It's always a pleasure to be on your on your show. So well, it's always a pleasure having you here. Yes. Now, I welcome two panel members. First of all, it's Ernest Reinhardt, who is the director of public relations at North Idaho College, and a, a new visiting panel member today, Kent Prost, and he is the vice president of the College Relations and Development North Idaho College. And welcome to both of you. Okay. And with that, Erna, we'll start today's questioning. Welcome to the show, Chief Allen and Andy. It's great to have you here with us today. And we're talking about a wonderful, interesting topic that our viewers are going to really enjoy. Um, Chief Allen, I wanted to, to, to start with you, first of all. The tribe has been incredibly, the Coeur d'Alene tribe has been incredibly successful with the casino and with the Circling Ravens golf course. And now they have ventured into a completely different arena with um, a variety of different kinds of companies. So. Share with us, first of all, your association with the Bird Company and what that has entailed. Well, thank you very much for having me on the show again. I, uh, it really uh, spawned from, uh, I can't take all the credit, I wish I could, um, but previous councils, they have always looked at diversifying our economy as one of the things that needed to get done. Um, for years, we, we spent a lot of money on the, the destination resort concept on and down really with the casino the golf course and the hotel um, but as any of the good businessmen knows that you have to diversify your economy to uh, keep your uh, portfolio up and running you can't put all your eggs in one basket so um, one time I would just uh, I got elected and some of the advice I got from some of the local leaders in Coeur d'Alene was to meet with um, uh, Josh plus Steve Griffiths and to uh, get on his uh, mailing list so uh, Take it upon myself to give him a call and uh, set up a meeting, and uh, and he said, and he said I'll put the Coeur tribe on my list when when companies come and visit North Idaho, we will put the Coeur tribe uh, as one of the people to see. And he said he had a couple of ideals, and um, those things turned into uh, what we see today with with Bird Companies, uh, a company that wanted to relocate from Spokane to North Idaho, and uh, I'm happy to say that we were uh, lucky enough to. Uh, be uh, be doing this, uh, business ventures with uh, Andy and his his crew. So, what is the exact association, um, Chief, between the tribe and the company? Did you purchase the company, or how does that work? Yeah, the tribe purchased the the company, and we, so we own sixty percent of the company. And Berg, uh, the Berg company is on forty percent of the company. So, okay. uh, the reason why um, we, the tribe went went this route was because. Previous tribal ventures kind of uh, always um, didn't turn out the way the tribe wanted it to be. So we wanted to uh, spread the risk out a little bit, and you know, and uh, being 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 newly elected, I didn't want to bring anything to the tribal council that would hurt the tribe in the long run. So we, we really wanted to start out with uh, a, a 60/40 uh, company. Excellent. My follow-up question, Andy, to you is. Um, before we get into the exact specifics of the contract and what we're here to celebrate mm -hmm. today, tell us a little bit about Bird, sure. the Bird Company, and, and what that company, what you do, what you make. Sure. Uh, the Bird <coughs> Companies was formerly F.O. Bird. It's the oldest company in eastern Washington, North Idaho, uh, formed in 1883, and it was a, traditionally a small canvas shop. Uh, I purchased the company 13 years ago with a partner. 
and we started focusing on certain markets outside of the region, if you will. And we were we primarily focused was on military contracting, military tents, fuel bladders, water bladders, niche markets for military and disaster relief, if you will. So when we were looking at uh, we were looking at expansion as well, diversifying. Uh, that's when we started talking to Steve Griffiths at Jobs Plus, and he made the introduction between myself and uh, the chairman. Excellent. Yep. Yeah, so. Berg Integrated has been focused on manufacturing the portable metal uh, structures. How did you come up with the idea of manufacturing these fuel containment units, and, and which really don't have anything to do with what is currently being manufactured in Plummer? Great question. Uh, the, the we are currently manufacturing similar products on a lot smaller scale in Spokane, and the 8A program uh, has certain products that are already in the 8A program. This 210,000 gallon fuel bladder is already in the 8A program, so one must be an 8A company in order to in order to compete for that. Follow-up question, um, as I understand it, one of the problems with these temporary fuel storage units has been a serious leakage problem. Uh, this poses a, a problem both in terms of loss of fuel and uh, environmental problems. How is this product going to differ and improve upon some of the weaknesses? Great question. Uh, we were, uh, the chairman and I uh, met with some folks from the UK, a company named Dunlop, who has been a British company that's been involved for years in this market, um, <clears throat> 60 plus years, and have a proven product out on the marketplace. We have uh, made arrangements with that company in order to uh, get the technology transfer over to the U.S. So we are um, we're currently working with their engineers, their manufacturing folks, you know, to, to get that done currently. And is the design work being done here or through Dunlop? Uh, the design work is all being done here, but it's the Dunlop process, okay. if you will. And Dunlop, is that the tire company? Do they make tires as well? Yes. More commonly known? Okay. Yes. Will Berg continue to manufacture those portable metal structures as well, Berg Integrated, or is that part of your business going to be phased out? Actually, we're going to, it's, it's a great question now. We actually get two business for the price of one, basically what happened. We are going to continue to do the the steel structures because we think that's a niche market. Uh, what we're going to do is probably just build a smaller location for those and um, have the main steel bladders. Uh, still, everything's still out of plumber, but we'll have probably two separate buildings and we'll basically still be under one umbrella. But we actually have two companies now with that. It's, it's amazing, and uh, we're taping this program in October, but it's delayed broadcast later. Um, at the time we're doing this, you recently uh, announced uh, something very exciting that with uh, your purchasing from the company, you've got a new contract with the U.S. Army, I believe. And it's one of the largest contracts that I am aware of in the Inland Northwest ever. And I believe that this first contract that you have uh, totaling $400 million, that's hard to get your mind exactly around that. Maybe you, for you it might not be, but for me it is. And so let me start again with, uh, in this case, with Mr. Barrett, and um, and then I want the chairman, of course, to speak to the issue because they are, you know, majority owners in this. What all does this contract entail? I mean, it's obviously it's going to be producing this particular product you've been describing, but is that over a certain number of years, and uh, the money will come in gradually? Yes, it's over a five-year period. Okay. <clears throat> it's called an IDIQ. It's estimated at four hundred million dollars, um, but IDIQ is an indefinite um, uh, quantity uh, and delivery time. So we don't know exactly when that will be coming. We are currently under contract for the first order for just shy of forty million dollars, which we we're beginning right currently. I mean, I might ask the chairman about the employment and what they're doing with their facility and all, but. I'd like for you to describe, can't talk to some about this, but there are other companies that I believe have made this particular uh, product, but 
the way they saw it and all that and have been breaking the scenes. And so, and I was talking to some members of the tribe recently, this is a different mechanism and it's supposed to, it's been, I believe in California you're testing this, explain, obviously it's in part you have to bring it together, but you're not doing a sewing of, of it, are you? How, how, what is that new technique that's been used? Okay. Um, currently what would, they would do is they would take the fabric, overlap it like this right. and weld it instead of sewing it, weld it using heat to bond the two pieces of material. Um, the Dunlop method is actually taking it like this together on a butt weld and with a, t a tape on top and a tape on bottom. And what that does is prevents what we call fuel migration. That fuel migrates in that, in wicks, in the in in that seam and weaken so when it. When you overlap it, then it gets in that seam. Absolutely. And can split it. Absolutely. And then when it's under UV, uh, high temperature, it fails. So 66% of these fuel bags in Iraq were failing. Two thirds of these. And when these fail, we're not springing a small little leak. It's a catastrophic failure. So the, there was a real sense of urgency by the Army to find a supplier with some technology to produce these quickly. According to the test so far, yours has not failed at all. It, it put on a great pressure and I understand that it's really holding. That's correct. With that in mind, these other companies are going to be out of business and the fuel uh, bags probably, and you, you're probably going to dominate the market, assuming that you have a patent on this and uh, they can't uh, copy your technique? So the, some of the processes patented and the technology is also, uh, some Dunlop is partially patented as well. So there's some protection there. So the tribe, you've done a great job buying into this company. Uh, you're very wise to do so. Um, Chairman, I know that you, you, when you moved the company into Idaho to where you're at and the plumber, take us through, I believe you had to redo some facilities and uh, tell, take us through that and how many people are you going to be employing and at the time of the taping of this show, at what stage are you in all that process? Well, right now we, uh, when we uh, we had an existing building in Plumber already that we had set a bit of not too much capital into to reconfigure it for the new company. Um, you already had a facility. We had a facility, um, which is good. I mean, uh, it was you know sorry to say, but it was, it was one of our failed, uh, you know. I don't know if you remember a few years ago, the tide tried to do the straw board, and you know the, yeah. the fuel burning around here in North Idaho is always uh, a problem. So we tried to team with farmers and do a, a straw board. Uh, uh, but what we didn't realize at that time was the particle board industry is so strong, powerful lobbyist, uh, we just couldn't break into the market. So um, you know we we tried our hat at that, and uh, so we uh, so the building kind of laid vacant for the last couple of years, and. Uh, and we were trying to really move around in Pope Falls, Coeur d'Alene, trying to find, uh, and we realized, well, let's just do it in Plummer. We have a building there. We can, sure. uh, if we have, need be, we can bus people in for uh, employment or whatnot. Uh, so at the time of, of this taping, we right now currently have about 35 employees there. Uh, when you air this, though, we, we will be up and running probably 70, 35 uh, employees uh, strong. And so, and you had to re remodel the building now for this production. Now, when you finish the bags, um, do you, you ship them from there by rail, or, or how do you do? How do you get them to your, uh, in this case, the army? It'll be by crate uh, on truck, is my understanding. Right? And this, yeah. Yeah. Now, one other question before I go back to the panel, and that's back to you, uh, Andy. Um, again, from what research I've done, not only does the army need these and um, Mm -hmm. Iraq or other places, but this may expand to where corporations, others that are doing work in Africa and other places, humane work. What I'm trying to ask you is, in addition to the fuel bags, can this particular design be used for uh, temporary hospitals or other things? Can it be just almost like a building? Yes. Uh, they, as far as the fuel bladders go, they can be used a lot of times for water, okay. uh, drinking water. Um, wastewater, fuel, all, all different types of chemicals and things like that. So there is a global um, market there for that. Um, but the, the largest is probably potable water for disaster relief. Okay. <coughs> is there any possibility that 
this design or a different design could be used for other things other than uh, fuels or water? Uh, will they ever be able to use it for anything else? And, uh, I've got some friends who are working in Africa and they're building some clinics and uh, some schools and all. Of course, that's a different issue, but I'm just wondering if there's any possible expand this beyond what you described. Well, currently our our three-in-one container, our steel fabrication mm -hmm. container, uh, is we're working with folks right now. We're working uh, with Doctors for Africa to put our three-in-ones, and we're, we're going to work with one of their uh, companies that goes in and does the integration. In these that's systems. a different product. That's what I didn't right. have clear. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that definitely has, but it's, again, it's remote site usage for. But it's unlimited market. Really. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Chairman Allen, <clears throat> give us a little bit of a visual. Um, I, I'm not sure how many gallons this holds, but give us a visual in terms of a football field. How big this thing is that we're talking about. Andy, you might need to do that because <laughs> I. Uh, it is. Uh, it's a uh, 76 foot by 76 foot by six foot high when it's full. 210,000 gallons of jet fuel. <clears throat> okay. That helps. So. I don't know how many you can fit in a football field. But okay. So when do you expect to finish assembly of the first one? January. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Awesome. Well, in January, before the show airs, but uh, you can really get an idea. So you're hoping to expand the workforce from 35 employees to 75 employees. Give us a little bit of an idea what kind of positions those will be. How many of those would be professional? employees? How many of those would be skilled employees? How would that break out, would you say? I would say part of my vision all along was to offer some more skilled positions for the tribe. Uh, right now we uh, we have people all over in, you know, the government side, you know, the medical side, uh, the service industry side. We really wanted to offer some some of these welding jobs to travel members, something that they could use in uh, take out for if need be. Um, so I, I would say uh, over half would be uh, skilled jobs, in my understanding, and then then you know then the other quarter to the half would be uh, uh, laborers or type whatnot. So. And yeah, but these jobs are going to be uh, nice paying, you know, twelve to thirteen dollars an hour. Uh, something that we really wanted to. Uh, Bring to the region too, because not only does the tribe worry about you know the citizens of Idaho, we also worry about uh, being conscious to uh, provide good jobs for for people in Idaho. Excellent. So while you while you are working on this five-year project, Andy, um, you mentioned this earlier, but I suspect that you will be trying to find other markets for that product. Share that with us a little bit. Well, under actually under the 8A program. <clears throat> contracting program, that's the intent, is basically to award these 8A contracts to 8A firms so that they can diversify. So they want to see us move away from government, and they want to see uh, us move into different products. And so, yes, that is definitely the intent, is to work towards commercial um, work, work globally. We would like to be a global manufacturer and diversify into other product markets. And you have to clarify for me. Did you did you call it an eight A like the numeral eight yes. and the letter A? That's correct. And what does that mean? Eight, the eight A program. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Eight A was set up by the federal government to help small business um, people get into the big market. As you as you know, uh, the big industries have uh, almost a monopoly on all the kind of big contracts. So eight A's were set aside or set aside. Uh, set aside by the federal government to give small business owners that opportunity to compete in that in that big market arena. Excellent. Yeah, probably. Question for either of you. The new units that you'll be manufacturing for the Army are certainly unique, and that, that to me means the training is going to be a critical element of the success of your company. Could you talk a little bit about your plans to, uh, to bring the skills up of your current employees as well as the new employees that you bring on board? Well, I have to part of it, maybe Andy can finish it off, but it's wonderful. We have a great relationship with North Idaho uh, College, and um, w before we sat down and we started looking at we we did it simultaneously with the contract in North Idaho. We wanted to uh, coordinate our efforts with the workforce program to 
to uh, we actually held the uh, welding classes on site with some of your professors from NIT that went down there and taught these classes. So it's a great relationship. Um, um, we've, the Korean tribe has a wonderful relationship with NIT, and you know we'll continue to hope that you know we do a lot of our classes through our our technology center down down in Plumber, But maybe Andy can finish it off. Sure. Well, kind of like what the chairman mentioned is half of the folks down there are going to be general laborers, but that's not the intent of the tribe or of bird companies is those those laborers are the ones that are going to become those skilled workers. They're, they're the, it, that's been our philosophy in Spokane at our facility there uh, for years and our best managers, our best skilled people, our best engineers are the folks that actually started with the broom. And so we'll, we'll incorporate that philosophy uh, at the plumber facility as well. Chairman Allen, I understand that you've uh recently been notified of a, a major federal grant to assist in uh, providing training. Could you talk a little bit about uh, what that's going to entail? Yeah, we're actually really excited. Uh, we've had a, a really good month, the uh, Coraline Tribe has. Uh, when we were working the time games with NIC and the contract, we also knew that we needed to secure some uh, federal funding to help train these folks. In the, and not just tell them, it's all it's Idaho and that, you know, this money is going to uh, to help everybody in the region, and that's one thing that we wanted to make sure. And we were awarded a $1.1 million grant, I, I, I do believe. I don't know the exact change or whatever, but uh, and it's over a three-year period of uh, 400000 a year, and we'll use that with NIC and Central NIC to uh, hold, hold, hold classes to get our workforce up and trained and ready to go. Can you describe some of the training? I, I assume welding and, and uh, fabrication, some of those kind of uh, uh, products. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think a lot of it is welding. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I apologize, but I don't.